Yeah, so um, my name is Ian West, uh, originally from uh, Inver Grove Heights, Minnesota. Uh, went to high school in the area and then went to do my undergraduate at the University of Minnesota. Um, got my degree in psychology and neuroscience and then I graduated in 2017 with my undergraduate degree. Um, and then the year after that, I went on and got my master's degree in education through the School of Kinesiology or the Department of Kinesiology, I should say. Um, and that would have been 2018. And I graduated with that. Um, I've been working. Uh, after that, actually, I went out to Boston, Massachusetts for about a year and a half. And I was working at Tufts Medical Center doing research and pain management um, and kind of like neurological processes along with psychological disorders and pain and how it manifests. Um, and then ultimately, I got brought back to Rochester, Minnesota um, in that would have been 2019, I believe, 2018, 19. Uh, to work at Mayo Clinic in the Department of Psychiatry and Psychology. Um, and so I went down there and I've been down there ever since, um, working within uh, the department on a couple of various research projects, uh, looking at a lot of community engagement work, um, using social media as a kind of like a platform to help people um, battling health information or battling misinformation, I should say, as well as other um, health related and research related needs um, and translational science. And then I've also been working on a uh, project just kind of like looking at like how telehealth can better impact um, patients receive, not having access to care, especially in rural parts of the state. Yep. Um, so I've been doing that. And then um, I'm currently working on uh, my doctorate in nursing practice uh, in psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner um, at Columbia University in uh, New York. Yeah, of course. Um, so like I said, I, as my undergraduate degree is in psychology and neuroscience. So I was in uh, college of liberal arts and college of biological sciences. So really didn't have a lot of involvement within uh, the uh, college of human education development, I believe is what's called now. Um, and so I didn't really have that, but uh, my junior year, I actually took a couple or my summer going into my junior year, I should say, I took a couple of courses, um, in the Department of Kinesiology, just um, you needed kind of courses that met certain requirements. And um, lo, lo and behold, I guess uh, I found out that I kind of enjoyed the material and I really enjoyed this concept of like physical activity and how that can play such a huge role into like, especially with my background of psychological illness and how they could really relate and have a lot of positive effects and almost be really used as an intervention in a lot of cases for individuals battling those illnesses. Um, so from there, I actually got the opportunity to work on a PhD dissertation with one of the PhD candidates within the school, um, Morgan Betker. And I worked with her and she specifically was looking at like cardiac variability and police officers. And so it's a really cool opportunity. It really helped me get immersed into kinesiology, really, as well as just physical activity as a whole. And so we worked on uh, doing a lot of heart rate variability testing. Uh, VO2 max testing, as well as like underwater weighing with police officers from like the local community and compiling that data and ultimately building her dissertation and presenting that information. And it was just really cool to be able to see that and kind of doing this like hands-on understanding, like, you know, okay, there's different, you know, levels of fitness and physical fitness. And like, how does that really translate to like stress response and other like kind of like psychological and neurological processes. And so after I graduated, I knew that I wanted to do some level of research, but I also really enjoyed the, the clinical side of things. And um, I kind of was undecided at that point, like where my career was going to go. I knew I wanted to go into healthcare, but I wasn't really sure what way I wanted to navigate that. So I figured I had this background in research and I really wanted to keep kind of building on that. And so I got the opportunity, um, I think I attended an interview session or open house session for the uh, PHP MED program and I attended it and I was just like, wow, this is so interesting. It's such a diverse program. It's going to give me all these tools that I kind of have a little bit, but I don't really have a, a full grasp on yet. Um, and it will really kind of help build on the prior undergraduate academic training that I've received and allow me to like really foster skills in areas that I knew that were going to be important for me to have. So like learning better research techniques and methodology but then also kind of learning more about like kind of pathophysiology as it relates to disease and kind of how physical activity and exercise can really fit into those different disease states. Um, and so that was ultimately what really pushed me to wanting to 
attend the program and graduate with it with a degree in the program. Yeah, I mean the program was super diverse. I mean, like I mean it's it's housed within the School of Kinesiology, which is in the College of uh, Human Education and College or is it yeah, Human College of uh, Dev Human College of Education and Human Development. Um, but it's just it ex expands so much more than that because kinesiology as a discipline is really unique in that like it is encompassed and relates to so many different disciplines. And so that was really, I think, one of the unique things about the program, because I had a lot of friends that were, you know, went on to get their master's degree in like biochemistry, genetics, neuroscience, other, you know, hard disciplines, as well as psychology, which is kind of where I was housed for so many years. And it's unique because those are all great programs. Um, and again, a lot of it is individualistic, where depending on what you want to achieve. But what I liked about the kinesiology department specifically is that because of its broad depth, I was taking courses in multiple disciplines. So I took courses in the department of genetics um, in CBS. I took courses in biochemistry specifically, as well as I took a couple courses that were looking at specifically kind of exercise physiology in that in the adult, but also exercise physiology in the pediatric population. And that's super unique and diverse where like it really helps you broaden your scope and kind of gives you like this well first knowledge that you wouldn't have had maybe if you were in a different department um, that was specifically focused on like that curriculum. Um, also on top of that, the professors and staff members in the department, you know, whether it be full-time professors, visiting professors, also the PhD students, they're also diverse. They all have such different backgrounds. Um, and I think that really helps because if you have ideas, so for instance, for me, like when I was working on my uh, master's thesis, like I had these different ideas, but I wasn't really sure how to really start compiling the data and how would I, where do I start? But like talking to people that come from so many different backgrounds, I mean, like a lot of the masters and PhD students, they were similar to me. Like they maybe didn't start off in a kinesiology background. They started somewhere else and they came here um, because they were interested in, you know, how physical activity or movement or exercise science can relate to like their problem that they're trying to solve for. Um, and so it's just really unique to see that. And so it's just, you know, interesting for me, like talking to someone like Dr. G who, has a strong background in like kind of the biochemistry of as it relates to um, you know activity, physical activity, and exercise. But also talking to like different professors that work with um, kind of community engagement and how do we go out and get people involved with physical activity? Because that's such a huge burden of in itself. It's like it's one thing to be able to understand like okay, this is the mechanism of action. And how if you perform this exercise or these types of tasks that you're going to have maybe this response in the body but it's another thing like how do you get people to do that <laughs> you yeah. know and so yeah. um like you know just be able to bounce ideas off of like you know zan gao um dr gao was uh, he does a lot of epidemiology and you know he worked with so many different populations and that was such an area that you know he helped me learn about it's just understanding kind of okay like these are hard to reach populations um and how do you get to them and also uh dr lewis who i believe is the director now of the school of kinesiology she was also a person that I took a class with and she did a really good job of kind of like working with, I think she worked with a lot of like uh, pregnant women uh, for her research focus and like just like how hard is it to get, you know, reach out to those populations. And so just learning those techniques, it's something that you can't always learn in a textbook or from a lecture. And so like actually be able to work with faculty, especially with faculty that are diverse, such as the ones in this school, it's just so helpful. And just, you know, the knowledge that they have is bountiful beyond belief. And I think, you know, the, the physical activity exercise area, I mean, it, it's very diverse and it's really, um, it really encompasses so many different domains. I think we've seen over the last couple of years, just how um, people have really started to get in touch more with like wanting to stay physically active and understanding like, really what are all the health benefits that come with being physically active and living a, a physically active lifestyle. Um, and so I'm really interested, I think, in tech. I think uh, tech is going to be a huge area in this field going forward that's going to really allow so much diversion and really help the field take off to even higher levels than it's already at uh, i think people are really fascinated with being able to track their fitness and physical activity and then also be able to kind of incorporate that into their health record and so i think it's going to be hopefully in you know a short time period but probably you know within the next 10 years i think you're going to start seeing more of that where 
when you go in for your PCP visit, um, you go to see your primary care provider, you go to see like, you know, a problem, maybe it's an urgent care visit. I think those questions will start to be asked more. I think we're learning so much more about like hypertension and other diseases, obesity is on the rise as well. And how, you know, physical activity can really play a huge role in that and getting people more physically active is going to be so important. Um, I think, unfortunately, with the pandemic, we saw a lot of inactivity and a lot of people were becoming more sedentary just due to the nature of lockdowns and not being able to go to work and not be able to, you know, have their lifestyle the same as it was before. Yeah. And so because of that, I really think that we're going to have to see, find ways, creative ways to get people to become more physically active again. And I think tech's going to play a huge role in that. Um, and so that means wearables, notifications on smartphones, apps. Um, I think those things are just going to be so important to get people more physically active and ultimately hopefully integrate that into people's health records so people can, their providers can see, okay, wow, like this is something that you've been doing and like I have the data here and like this is awesome and that, you know, we can work on this and modify this as an intervention. And then also hopefully like getting people more involved with, like, you know, phys exercise physiologists and other PT is another area that I think is going to be super helpful going forward. Also just nursing as a whole. I mean, I think nursing and understanding that kind of bounds of physical activity and how that can really help um, keep both their patients specifically develop better outcomes and also just like live a healthier life. You know, prevention is such a key part of medicine. Yeah, um, great question. So um, as I said, I'm, I'm working on my, getting my doctorate in nursing practice right now, my DNP in psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. Uh, my goal essentially would be is I'd like to work within kind of community medicine, serving individuals that are struggling with mental illness, um, especially kind of um, more in an acute phase. And then hopefully working with some of my background in pain management, I saw a lot of people that had chronic pain, um, but they also had a lot of like psychological issues. And I think physical activity from what I've studied from really back to like my sophomore year um, at the VA and just understanding like, you know, kind of the manifestations of PTSD and just like understanding like, you know, people that were sedentary seem to have worse outcomes. And that just seemed to be all across the board. And so taking my knowledge that I got from the MDE program, along with my research that I've conducted so far and been a part of, um, and my clinical background that I'm working towards now, I'm really hoping to like, kind of be in a situation where I can provide a holistic level of care to patients um, and not just treat their mental illness or work to manage their mental illness, but also like really work to incorporate physical activity and exercise into their lifestyle on a day-to-day -day basis. Because I really believe that if I can start doing that, I'm hopeful that I can start, you know, having more and more patients, having better outcomes. And at the end of the day, like, that's really the goal is to have people, patients essentially have better outcomes. You know, yeah. if we can get those positive outcomes, I um, mean, even on a prevention side, I mean, I'd love nothing more than to be able to work with people before they develop a severe mental illness and, Maybe even pain. I mean, pain is like such a huge area as well, where I think you see some of that overlap and um, getting people active. When I was at when I was at a Tufts Medical Center in Boston, I you know I was looking at a lot of, with patients that they they weren't being as physically active, and you know their pain was progressively getting worse. And I just feel like that's such an area that if we can intervene earlier, that it'll just really again give better outcomes. And if we can get better patient outcomes, it's just that's the name of the game at the end of the day. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, my best advice would say, one, get involved. Uh, I mean, the University of Minnesota has so many resources, especially even within, even if you just stick within the school of kinesiology, it's, it's, there's so many resources, but then as you kind of start broadening yourself out, if you're interested in something, someone at the university is doing something around that topic. Um, you have to find it. That's the hardest part. It's just yeah. finding out who is doing that and who, how do you, you know, who is it? How do you contact them? Once you yep. figure out those steps, you are going to be able to get that ball rolling and hopefully get connected with that person, understand kind of like, you know, talk to them. What are you interested in? They obviously have an interest. The, the topic that they're doing or that their research is driven towards is something that you're interested in. How can you help them? How can they help you? And once you kind of establish that bi-directional communication, it's going to really allow you to thrive because then all the, everything that you're learning in your coursework and building kind of your, you know, whether it's a research background or, you know, teaching background or whatever you want to do with the degree, 
you're going to be able to take that information and really start applying it, which is really kind of at that, that point in the career um, is the biggest goal is, you know, you want to get the knowledge, you want to be able to translate that knowledge, but you want to be able to apply that knowledge at some point. And so I feel like getting connected is such an important step on that process because it can be so easy to kind of just go through the motions day to day and just, you know, again, doing great in the coursework, that's awesome. But at some point you got to start really learning how to apply the knowledge. And I feel like you can't necessarily learn that from a lecture hall, but you have to learn that from really mentoring up with someone and finding a good mentor. And so I'd really recommend that. Don't be scared to reach out. Um, all the professors that I had, as well as professors I didn't have, people just in the department or even at the university wide level, I, you know, again, send them an email. I mean, they'll get back to you. Like most of the time they will get back to you and they will be happy to help you or meet with you and assist with you, especially, you know, nowadays with Zoom and everything, it's so easy to schedule appointments and find a time that you can meet for even just for 15, 20 minutes. But yeah, don't be scared to send those emails because it makes such a difference. Um, and then just like I said, just, you know, really try to keep your focus, you know, broad at first, but then start narrowing it down as you go through. I think a lot of people come in and they have a very specific focus and that's great. But at some point too, you also get a little blinders on. So like for me, I came in, I knew that I had this background in mental health and neuroscience. I had been working at the VA for, I think, three years at that point. Um, I had a really little brief stint uh, doing that undergraduate research in the Department of Kinesiology with uh, heart rate variability. But I was like, okay, I'm just going to work on PTSD and physical activity. Like, that's what I'm going to do. And that was great. I mean, I'm glad I had that kind of insight. But at the same time, I got so narrow so quickly that I was missing on this other stuff where I was like, oh, like, I'm not even thinking about what information I'm picking up on this class the same way that I would be if I like didn't have a specific topic that I was working towards. Um, I say, I think that's an important topic just to realize is just don't get so narrow right away. It'll come, you know, you have, you're in the program for a while. So like start broad one semester at a time, and then you can start narrowing it. And then you're like, okay, sweet. Now I have an idea of where I want to narrow my focus. I mean, I honestly don't really have like, any uh, necessarily quotes or anything. Um, I mean, all the professors I had in the program, I mean, I've thanked them many of times. Um, but like I said, I mean, the U of M is just, it's such a great place to go to school because again, there are so many great professors. Um, and with really without them, like the knowledge, you know, it's not the same. I mean, it's really the professor. I mean, you know, you can order the book on Amazon, anyone can, but like the professor is what makes the book come to life, in my opinion. Yeah. And so that's such an important topic. And I think people need to realize that and really be thankful that these are world-class experts that are really, you know, taking, you know, they've devoted their career essentially and taking their time to like help foster you and, you know, help teach you the best the knowledge essentially the best way possible. And so um, that's kind of like where, you know, I'd say thanks, you know, to them because without them, I think the material would not have been the same and the experience definitely would not have been the same. I think it's a great idea to combine, uh, you know, move it into a BS program. Um, I think ultimately, just because I think, you know, like, I don't know, I feel like, you know, again, I wasn't even a kinesiology major, um, but I know specifically, uh, you know, like just, you know, there's a lot of people that just did straight kinesiology. And that was usually kind of more of like a pivotal where it's like some people, most people I'd probably say would go to PT school, OT school, maybe medical school, nursing school, and then a few of them would maybe go with the PhD route. And so it's just like kind of more like a hodgepodge of, of students. And so I think being able to combine this earlier on will definitely help give some students some guidance. And maybe, I know a lot of people want to just teach and that's great, especially at all levels. And so hopefully that'll be super helpful for that.